Hello and welcome to Chinwag. I'm Paul Giamatti. And I'm Stephen Asma. And as promised, Chinwaggers, here's a little extra bonus wag for your listening enjoyment. Mm, bonus. Bonus. <laughs> <laughs> See you on the other side, Waggers. There's a story you wrote that I really liked that is there's a there's a technology that allows us to record every moment of our lives. And so we have every single moment. You have this and it's basically it's become the most accurate possible memory you could have. It is it is you you have this infallible memory and it's replaced your memory in a sense. You can just find out everything. And what I took from the story that I thought was really lovely is this is the is the idea that actually Forgetting and mis misremembering are really important parts of developing human relationships, and that in fact this isn't isn't ultimately going to help you that much in in human relationships, right? Well, so um, oh, and so uh, that's a story called uh, the truth of fact, the truth of feeling. Right. You know, what I was trying to do in that story is kind of to illustrate some of the pros and cons of this. The, yeah. And um, and I guess you know it's. Uh, it's not that it, that having this would necessarily be good or necessarily be bad. Like if you and your partner are having a, an argument about who said what yeah. first, at one level, like, okay, uh, like, well, you know, we need, you know, you could say like, well, we need to find out who said what first. Right, yeah. And you know, like, maybe that's useful because at another level, maybe that's not really the problem. Maybe the problem yeah. Yeah. is, you know, like, it doesn't matter who said what first. It's like, can you, as a couple, yeah, are are you, you know, can you get past this? Can you somehow, you know, work through this? Because that's what a relationship is. It, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think this is true in politics too, because I think after Franco, they in Spain they created something called like the Pact of Forgetting, and I've seen this in Rwanda and in Cambodia. Where you need to move on. It's sad, but you have to move on. So you almost have to like the an enforced kind of forgetting. It's like forgetting and reconciliation. It's weird. Well, I mean, uh, or like in South Africa, there's you know, sort of the truth and reconciliation. Uh, exactly. Uh, the, there is there there is value in knowing what actually happened, and yeah. uh, but there's uh, there is also value in sort of moving past it. And, yeah. uh, and so, yeah. And I think one of the things that ha has often happened in, you know, like sort of these truth and reconciliation sort of, uh, committees is that, you know, people admit to their crimes and then, you know, and then we move on. They get some amnesty after they confess yes. certain things. Because yeah, like, cause yeah, you know, it's important that, you know, you admit what you did, mm. but now, and then, you know, like, you know, uh, then we can move on. You know, then you know it is ultimately better for you know the society, you know, if we can move on. And so I think there there's a good case to be made that you know something similar you know is true for individual relationships. That we you know you, you can admit yes you you did the thing you know you said the thing and you know uh, you fucked up. <laughs> uh, and then you're, you're sorry, and the other person forgives you. You're able to move on, and then you yeah. then you then you move on. And it's you know so um, and that you know maybe that is uh, like like so that is probably better than denying that it happened. Right. It's yeah. You know, it's better than you know, pretending it didn't happen, and it's also better than you know looking at the record and saying like okay, gotcha. Now mm -hmm. slamming somebody yeah. in the face with yeah. it repeatedly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. and then like having that just be you know like something that you hold on to forever. Like, well, so uh, remember, we have the video of you saying the thing. So right. now yeah. you know, you're never going to live that down. You know, horrifying. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. So I think th those are some of the issues that I was uh, yeah. you know, yeah. trying to get at with, with the story that, that you're, yeah, you're mentioning. No, it's just nice. It gets at the ambiguity of the technology and the ambiguity of the human technological interface is really great. And also, I really like that in your work, you're interested in memory uh, in addition to like, to, to the question of like, what is the self? What is self-identity? Like, it, it's not the material self. It's not maybe the religious self or the soul. Is it 
something like your memory. I'd find that stuff interesting. I guess because we're now like extended mind is this idea that we're like offloading our memories to these devices like our phones to computers. Um, and even like, it's just unclear what the self is. Like, what are you exactly? Um, is it just uh, these memories you've had or is there some spiritual substance that you think continues through your life, you know? So I would say that, you know, you, your memories are an important part of you, but they're not the only thing that, you know, that makes you who you are. Who you are as a person uh, also has to do with, you know, like uh, what your goals are, what uh, what sort of things you like, how how do you interact with other people? Because, you know, we- Unconscious stuff too. Yeah. And so we can imagine like, like a couple hypothetical s- scenarios. One where a person, you know, uh, they were, you know, they suffer a knock to the head. They retain all of their memories, but their personality changes. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's like, well, okay. So clearly something has happened. Uh, and you know, we would say like, okay, this is not the same person anymore, even if this person retains all their memories. Mm-hmm. So who they are yeah. is definitely more than just their memories. Conversely, you have a si- situation where someone, you know, gets a knock on their head and like they lose all their memories, but you know, their personality remains, you know, un- unchanged. So there you'd say like, okay, there, you know, there is def- there's a real loss there. Um, especially because like, if they don't remember you, they don't really know you anymore. And so there is this, there's a sense in which, because like your relationship with that person was built on all this shared experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if that goes away, yeah, you have also lost something, you know, even if their personality remains entirely, you know, the same they're, you know, they are no longer the person that you knew in a sense, because they no longer have that shared history with you. So in either case, you know, yeah, there is there is something fundamental that something important that has been lost. And um, without arguing about, you know, without trying to get into like which one is worse or which one is closer, you know, like I think, you know, that is a simple you know way to think that like to arrive at the conclusion that, you know, who you are, you know, it incorporates, it involves your memories, but it involves other aspects of yourself. Uh, other aspects besides your memory. So like, you know, yeah, memory is not the only thing, but you know, it's not nothing. I'm going to ask you something just that's even, I guess, cause I'm curious. I saw you talk a little bit in something about this, but do you have any belief in anything like a soul, anything immaterial in human beings? Are you an atheist? And, and do you, is there anything? I'm, I'm an atheist. In, I'm an atheist. Uh-huh. And so I, I don't believe in an immaterial soul. I think, uh-huh. uh, yeah, we are just matter. Um, but, uh, but I guess, you know, um, in a sense, uh, it's kind of, um, uh, even that phrase, you know, that we are just matter Mm -hmm. in in a way that's, that's a little dismissive. You know, we're only matter, but, but, you know, glorious matter. Yes. Being made made of atoms is not a, is not a, an insult. It's not a, it's not (laughs) a bad thing. You know, right. Um, uh, (laughs) Yeah, human beings, you know, are amazing, and we are made just of atoms. Uh, mm-hmm. And it, so it, it it doesn't. I don't think it it uh, we should think of it as diminishing us mm-hmm. to say that we are made only of atoms. Uh, yeah, because so so many people's take on that is that that's such a dark, grim, nihilistic view of the world that it, to reduce it just to that is just terribly must be such a sad way to live. You know that 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 that's how you see things, but but I agree with you that it's just as strangely miraculous. I'm not, I am not an atheist, but but looking at it that way, I can see it just as sort of astounding that we're just and you know. So uh, I have said that you know maybe one of the underlying themes in my work is uh, an attempt to distinguish between materialism, the idea that we are just made out of matter. And nihilism, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, yeah, there is this, there, you know, there's still this very strong tendency to think that materialism implies nihilism. That, yeah, you know, that the idea that we are only made out of matter that means, oh, well, suddenly, like, okay, uh, uh, all life is meaningless, and you know, right. R- rape, pillage, and burn. Yeah, yeah that's we can the just kill each other with impunity. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I, yeah. I, I very strongly disagree with that. 
um, you know, we, you know, we are able to make our own meaning, you know, in, you know, even if there is no God, I think, yeah, I think that is, that is what we can do. And that's what we actually do. You know, we do make our own meaning without there being, uh, without the need of some guiding moral yeah. being some, but that, mm. that morality is inherent somehow you can discover morality in yourself. You, you can have general, like, uh, uh, moral principles and have arrived at them, you know, yeah, through your own experience and your own, you know, sort of cogitation rather than being reliant on a supernatural source for them. You know, some people th think like you, if there's no God, then you discover morality like a scientist discovers a fact that there are sort of moral facts out there. And then there's another school that's like the Nietzsche existential view, which is it's almost like it's a creative work of the imagination that you actually make. Because because after the death, you know, God, famously Nietzsche said God is dead, and then uh, Sartre, Jean Paul Sartre, was sort of making fun of the existentialists who were like, yeah, but we're just going to go about our business as sort of like the religious people were, same ethics, same morality. Um, and then sort of the hardcore existentialists are like, no, you just, you're making um, moral good as you go, like an artist makes a painting or something. That's kind of scary because it it leaves the possibility that you could have an existential hero that's also like a, a serial killer. Yeah. Or, you know, you know, it's no, like it the taxi that's driver, really, American yeah. psycho kind of scenario. Well, um, a reasonable starting point for morality is, you know, just... It comes out of lived experience and empathy of the sort where it's like, you've been hurt, mm -hmm. you've been lied to, and you know what it was like. And so you realize that you shouldn't do that to someone else because it has been done to you and you didn't like it. And so- uh, Do unto others. Yeah. No, and that's, that's where like the karmic- it's just a system of karma actually works better sometimes than thinking of morality, which seems so rooted in kind of Judeo-Christian. Mm. But this idea, and I was, I think I said this to you, Steve, I've talked to a Zen monk who somebody said to him once, you know, how can I know if it's good or bad karma? And the guy said, does it, does it feel bad? Do you feel bad? <laughs> does something bad happen to you? It's, that's how he was judging it. If it doesn't, if it makes you feel bad, it's probably wrong that mm. somebody did to you and then don't do it to them. Yeah, and um, what moral philosophy is trying to do is like, okay, can we come up with a system of principles which agrees with our intuition in matters where we feel like, okay, I have a strong intuition about, you know, that this is right or wrong. And then, you know, if that works, then those rules can help us in situations mm -hmm. where we don't have a strong in intuition. Yeah. Because, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause, yeah mm -hmm. That's good. Because, like, yeah, they're, they're- That's a good point. Um, uh, and, you know, in, in some ways- this is sort of analogous to science in, in as much as like you're trying to come up with a system of rules, which explains, you know, the observations and then, you know, how, you know, does, can it predict a model? Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. You know, what does it predict in a new situation? Mm. And, you know, so mm -hmm. if we can come up with some idea of, of moral uh, rules or guidelines, which match up with the things that we, you know, we know we feel, and then it's like, okay, then how well does it do in situations where it's like, okay, I don't know what is the right thing to do here. Um, and uh, yeah, so is, is, it, is it appropriate for children, for, for parents to uh, choose the genes of their children? It's like, I don't, I like off the top of my head, I'm like, I'm, you know, like, I'm, I can't look at the Bible for that like, one. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And so then, you know, you, you know so then you like, you, you try and come up with, Right. Right. Arguments which you know are based on situations that we you know do have strong intuitions about you know what principles are at work and then how do those principles apply in this new situation and mm -hmm. you know this is obviously far from infallible but you know the role of sort of our moral intuitions our you know our experience you know that is I think essential as opposed to trying to reason from like a purely logical position, yeah. like, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. from, right. you know, if we, you know, in a purely abstract universe, without regard to anything I've ever felt, like, trying to design, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, bad model. <laughs> law, yeah. you know, laws of what is good or, or evil. Yeah. It's like, and, you know, to sort of tie back into, uh, like, the idea of, like, you know, like, if artificial intelligence 
can we trust it to, you know, with, with decisions with real moral weight? Uh, and some people say like, well, you know, it's, they think, oh, it's so smart. It's going to know what is the right thing, you know, even when we don't. And I'm like, All right. um, no, would, you know, <laughs> if there is an entity which has never felt pain, you know, <laughs> yeah. would you trust it to, you know, yeah, right. if, if, you know, if there's some entity, you know, which, you know, has been, you know, uh, like no matter what any, how, how it was treated, it never felt anything. You know, yeah. would you say like, okay, there's someone that I trust making decisions. It's like, no, no. You know, <laughs> that's a terrible. That's the last, uh, yeah. that's the last kind of entity yeah. that you would want making decisions. I've worked with some people like that in Hollywood. So yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have. And, <laughs> and he's going to yeah. name, name some names. <laughs> I don't know. Well, this has been a treat. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had fun. We'll meet you back here again next week. Wag on weirdos. Chinwag is a production of Treefort Media and Touchy Feely Films, hosted and executive produced by Paul Giamatti and Stephen Asma. Executive producers for Treefort are Kelly Garner and Lisa Ammerman. Dan Carey is executive producer for Touchy Feely. Our series producer is Rachel Whitley Bernstein. Original theme music by Luke Top, with additional music by Via Mardot. Oscar Guido is our executive in charge of production. Tom Monahan is head of audio for Treefort. Animation created by Alex Sokol. Editing and mixing by Jeff Neal. Lastly, for more information, go to chinwagpod.fm and find us on Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod. <laughs>